good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to start this first webinar uh, of the project. The webinar is entitled Sustainable Energy for Egypt, State of Play and New Initiatives. Uh, dear friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's our pleasure in the project for support to the technical and financial sustainability of renewable energy and energy efficiency sectors. This is the title of the project, it's a little bit long. Uh, to have our first webinar, which has a, uh, a title, uh, Sustainable Energy of Egypt, State of Play and New Initiatives. This webinar is the first of a series of webinars which will be uh, tackle the different aspects of the energy sector in Egypt. The project support to technical and financial sustainability of the renewable energy and energy efficiency sector is an EU funded technical support project to the energy sector in Egypt. The project is conducted through an agreement with both the Ministry of Electricity and Renewable Energy and the Ministry of Petroleum and Mineral Resources. The project is executed through a consortium of consulting firms, including DAI Human Dynamics as a leader uh, uh, for the consulting team in cooperation with Tractable NG and Lamayer International. Uh, Lamayer International already has been acquired by Tractable since 2014. The consortium has a long experience with the energy sector in Egypt through several previous projects. The project consists of five components, including component A, a reorganization of the core functions of NARIA. This is especially for the planning functions, renewable energy investment and energy efficiency. Component B, which is about modernizing of renewable energy framework which includes uh, the technical, legal, and regulatory framework to increase the capacity of the energy system to absorb more renewable energy and investments uh, in the energy efficiency. Component C, which is energy modeling capacity building and strengthening, which includes the establishment and building the capacity of the energy modeling unit, as well as update and extension of the integrated and sustainable energy strategy of Egypt 2035 to be extended to 2040. Component D, uh, contributing to create an enabling and conducive environment for renewable energy and energy efficiency. This component includes establishment of a Cairo Sustainable Energy Information Center for communication and awareness regarding renewable energy and energy efficiency. Finally, uh, component E, which is a technical assistance to the energy efficiency and climate change in the Ministry of Petroleum and Mineral Resources, which includes enhancing the organizational <coughs> structure of the energy efficiency unit at the ministry, business plan for the coming two years and capacity building for the expert of Minister of Petroleum and Renewable uh, and Mineral Resources. Our webinar today will focus on some of the relevant topics, specifically promoting renewable energy and energy efficiency in different sectors, targeted goals, impact of COVID-19 on the development plan, and how it can represent an opportunity rather than being an obstacle. And finally, plans to achieve Egypt goals to achieve 42% of the electricity uh, share coming from renewable and 18% energy efficiency uh, out of the consumption expected by 2075. It is my pleasure uh, to introduce Dr. Biltegi, Dr. Ahmed Biltegi, Energy and Transport Sector Manager at uh, uh, the EU delegation to Egypt for an introductory work. Please, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Hafez, for this uh, excellent introduction. Um, I, I just uh, will, I will just say some few words before leaving the floor to my colleagues to listen to their interesting views. I would like, first of all, to thank all the panelists who accepted to participate in this webinar. 
I would like also to extend our appreciation and thanks to the participants, but also to the organizers of this event. Uh, so Egypt and the EU have a close cooperation in the energy sector and signed two consecutive MOU for strategic cooperation in energy. We have partnered with Egypt in a large number of projects, providing grants to soften loans, to expand infrastructure projects, and also to provide uh, technical expertise. Our cooperation was basically structured on four pillars, the good governance, establishing of internal, internal markets, demand side management or energy efficiency, and last but not least, scientific cooperation. The aim is not to provide you with a list of projects or with figures about the amount of funds injected. The aim is to let you know uh, that uh, the cooperation was and is still intense uh, with nearly all uh, stakeholders of the Egyptian energy sector. One of the most challenging assignments we were proud to carry out closely with our Egyptian counterparts is the Sustainable Energy Strategy 2035. The strategy involves stepping up the use of renewables and improving energy efficiency. Uh, in the power sector. The government has set targets for renewables to make up an important part of the country's electricity mix by 2035, based on rapid solar and, uh, of course, wind deployment. A lot of efforts were exerted in order to produce the strategy, and the EU is still providing support to update it. Taking into account a number of ongoing events that encompass COVID, but not limited to it, as it extends to include the current level of gas production, uh, but also the, the current level of uh, electricity uh, uh, generation, uh, we can legitimately brainstorm together about a number of topics. And I will mention only a few. For instance, the status of streamlining regulations and institutional roles and responsibilities for wind and solar development. I mean the work needed to further apply the different clauses of the Electricity Act, in particular with respect to uh, carving out clearly separated entities that have clear roles and responsibilities, reforming the current market framework to improve project bankability, finalizing the establishment of the entity tasked up with updating energy and power sector. And I think that your project is uh, well uh, working on, on, on this front. Um, the building of renewable energy projects to strengthen risk mitigation and ensure their financial viability. Uh, biomass, the deployment, development of a master plan for enhancing local manufacturing capabilities, and so on and so forth. So a lot of issues and a lot of axes of reflection that can uh, that we can legitimately think of, based on the fact that the the, the work on the strategy has been uh, time consuming and was uh, and involved all the Egyptian uh, stakeholders and participants. The last point I would like to mention is the European Green Deal. The overarching aim of the European Green Deal, as you all know is for the European Union to become the world's first climate neutral bloc by 2050. It has goals extending to many different sectors, uh, including construction, biodiversity, energy, transport, and foods. The aim, again, is not to explain the deal, but to highlight the fact that there will be a lot of lessons learned that would benefit other partner countries, such as Egypt. Think tanks in Europe have already started to brainstorm about the Green Deal from uh, different, uh, different angles. For instance, they are thinking about the appropriateness of the market design developments proposed by the European Commission in the Clean Energy Package. They are also thinking, thinking about the best practices to introduce scarcity pricing via reforms of balancing and reserve mechanism, managing congestions on the transmission network, designing efficient electricity markets to achieve multiple policy objectives, the impact of renewables on electricity markets in the short term and the long term, how can we efficiently interface with the European carbon trading uh, scheme uh, uh, be achieved? What does the latest ETS reform phase, uh, uh, for, um, for phase four, four entail? And uh, so also a lot, of, a lot of lessons learned, a lot of things that will be drawn out of, of this uh, very important uh, uh, initiative uh, from, uh, by the, the European Commission. So just to update you, the European Commission has also launched a 1 billion uh, euro call for research and innovation projects that respond to the climate crisis and help protect Europe's unique ecosystem and biodiversity. The Horizon 2020 funded European Green Deal goal, which was open for registration a couple of days ago, is expected to foster Europe's recovery from the coronavirus crisis by turning green challenges into innovation opportunities. The 1 billion European Green Deal call is the last and biggest call uh, tender under the Horizon 2020 program. Uh, 
and with innovation at its heart, this investment will accelerate uh, a just and sustainable transition to a climate neutral Europe by 2050. As we do not want, uh, Europe does not want to anyone left behind in the systemic transformation, Europe calls for specific actions to engage with citizens in novel ways and improve societal relevance and impact. I'm just mentioning this to highlight the importance of research and innovation in any national dialogue to solve challenges related to the sector. Indeed, the coming years will witness also a transformation of the energy markets and networks. The phrase Uberize energy, like Uber, has been tossed around at regulatory conferences by industry watchers and even by the World Economic Forum. And it's a captivating opener. Whether we are talking miles or megawatts, who isn't drawn to the idea of using technology and entrepreneurship to transform a highly regulated industry that is slow to innovate, especially when disruption poses a, a threat to, um, I would say, uh, uh, it's very, um, uh, uh, core of survival with a dash of technology, some business model innovation and app savvy customers we are, all, we are all on the road to a new future, even in the energy sector. Uh, with this, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Uh, many thanks for your attention, and I wish you all an excellent webinar. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for very, this very informative speech. Uh, sure, the Green Deal, it's a part of our program uh, of webinars. Uh, it, uh, one of the webinars downstream will include uh, a description and background about the Green Deal. Sure, the point you mentioned about the ongoing energy transition so far and sector integration between different sector, transport sector, energy sector, gas sector, electricity sector, even telecom and digitalization sectors uh, are very much important and this has become the trademark for the energy transition. Uh, today we are lucky to have two distinguished speakers. And uh, it's quite evident we have now 67, 68 uh, attendees uh, who are uh, 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 69 now become who are attending our uh, 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 webinar. Uh, actually, we have uh, Dr. Mohammed Al Khayyar, uh, Chairman of New and Renewable Energy Authority, and Engineer Ahmed Abdrabo, Assistant Chief of Petroleum. Uh, Central Department at the Ministry of Petroleum and Mineral Resources. Uh, uh, we're going to have first the two presentations by uh, our presenters and then uh, uh, for the attendees, any question you would like to forward, please write it in English, in Arabic, and then we will collect all questions and try to uh, pose it to our uh, speakers by uh, the end of uh, the summer. Uh, if you allow me uh, to present Dr. Khayyat, Dr. Khayyat uh, is the executive chairman of New and Renewable Energy Authority, NARIA. He is the chairperson of Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Committee at the League of Arab States. Also, he has over 25 years of experience in the field of energy and environment. He participated in drafting Pan-Arab Renewable Energy Strategy issued by League of Arab States in 2010. He participated also in drafting renewable energy laws and regulations in Egypt. Uh, he received many awards from different countries and worked with different regional and international entities. Dr. Khayyar has issued nine books uh, Five are already published as a printed and four are uh, e-books. Also, I know that Dr. Khayyat has uh, a journalist talented. He is participating as, um, uh, 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 as an uh, opinion, uh, uh, with his opinion, share his opinion with many newspapers. And uh, please follow his opinion in several newspapers. I understood that... Uh, uh, in Al-Watan, Dr. Khayyat, you all... Al-Ahram uh, al khalig Al-Ahram al khalig So please follow Dr. Khayyat in this. <laughs> Today, Dr. <laughs> Khayyat uh, will speak to us about the uh, uh, impact of the COVID-19 on the renewable energy market in Egypt. 
plans for the government to reach the, as well as the plans for the government to reach the 2035 sustainable energy goals, which is 42% share of renewable energy in the electric scheme. Dr. Hayat, please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Hafiz, for the uh, introduction. And also, I would like Yanni, uh, to say for all of you, uh, good morning, everybody. And I hope that all of you are uh, safe. Um, also, I would like to thank uh, EU for the continuous support for Egypt in both uh, renewable energy and energy f efficiency activities, either for the uh, paving the way for more implementation dissemination for uh, projects and also the capacity building for the uh, uh, Egyptian staff uh, to work in both uh, fields. Uh, also, I would like to thank Human Dynamics and uh, its team uh, either in Egypt and uh, in France and in different countries to support Egypt uh, during this uh, uh, project. Uh, through my presentation, I will uh, try to focus um, regarding the renewable energy in Egypt, some challenges that we're already facing uh, due, uh, due to uh, COVID-19 and how could we overcome and some potential activities to be done. Uh, may I think that you will share the, uh, or, or may I share my Okay, thank you very much. Yes, it's done. Ah, yes, okay. It's now. Okay. Okay, yes. Okay. Um, regarding the renewable energy in Egypt, we can say that during the last five years, we witnessed a frog leap in the implementation of different renewable energy projects. Almost when we compare between the year 2015 and the year 2020, we can say that more than 60% of the installed capacity is already uh, installed. In 2015, there were around 3.7 gigawatt, including hydropower. Now we are almost 6 gigawatt, in addition to other projects already uh, in the implementation. When we uh, have a look regarding the energy already generated from different uh, renewable energy, energy sources, we will see that hydropower is still as the major share in addition to wind and solar after implementing uh, Bimban Solar Complex in addition to CSP and uh, bioenergy. Uh, regarding the uh, uh, capacities already uh, installed in Egypt for the hydropower, we are speaking about almost 2,800 of megawatt. Almost most of the hydropower uh, resources already exploited. Consequently, now we don't have any more potential to be installed uh, uh, for, for hydro. And if we include the bomb and distorted in Ata and in different areas, it could be from, uh, yani some of the potential projects to be installed. Regarding wind energy, and if we would like to summarize wind energy history in Egypt and numbers, we can say that we have uh, two uh, wind energy complex, uh, Zafarana wind complex, almost. Uh, 540 megawatt in addition to Gulf of Zay uh, uh, wind energy complex and all of them are owned by uh, new and the renewable energy uh, authority in RAA in addition to uh, uh, the first uh, BOO project which is already in operation since October uh, 2019. In addition to that we have uh, two projects now under the uh, construction uh, with total capacity uh, 500. One of them is BOO project and the other one is already owned by uh, Nerea, which is uh, recently signed in uh, last August. In addition to that, there are three projects with total capacity 1500. Each one is uh, 500 megawatt uh, and all of them will be owned by the private sector and will be implemented in Gulf of Suez. Uh, through this, yani, uh, these numbers, we can see that the major share for uh, uh, wind energy projects, uh, uh, which will be implemented during the coming few years, will be will be for the private sector, which is the most intention uh, for the uh, government to uh, uh, 
expand the role for the private sector. Uh, consequently, when we compare uh, for the investment for wind energy, we can say that we are almost close to four billion US dollar uh, 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 for wind, uh, mostly for uh, the year 2020. And despite the COVID-19, we are speaking about almost five billion Egyptian pounds already invested in, in wind energy projects, either for the private sector and the public uh, projects. Uh, for the solar energy, uh, uh, Bemban uh, Solar Complex is one of the world uh, key uh, uh, marks all over the world regarding the uh, BV projects, almost 14, 65 megawatt with total uh, investment, uh, investment more than 2 billion uh, US dollar. All of these investments already bumped uh, through international financing institutions uh, and uh, also regional uh, ones which uh, yani, frankly speaking uh, gives uh, uh, different and many positive uh, messages. The first one is the attractiveness uh, to invest in Egypt in general and the ability of renewable energy to attract foreign direct investment uh, 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 to the Egyptian market. In addition to that, the harmony among all the governmental entities uh, to uh, orchestrate their uh, efforts in, as a one team uh, uh, to fulfill the requirements for the private sector, especially if we know that Bemban Solar Complex uh, consists of uh, 32 projects, uh, 30 out of them already implemented in uh, the same time, which was a challenge. Uh, and frankly speaking, it was also an amazing uh, uh, success story, which could be any, uh, uh, followed or represented or to, to, to be uh, copied in uh, either in uh, uh, other places or in different countries. In addition to that, we have uh, Kuraimat uh, CSP project, we have a small uh, BV project in Komombo, but in addition to that, we have in the pipeline almost uh, uh, more than 500 megawatt already secured for uh, either in tendering or in the development and most of them will be uh, implemented by the private sector. This is also confirms the intention for the government to maximize the share of private sector during the coming period for implementing either wind or solar uh, energy projects. Total investment uh, for solar is, is almost uh, 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 around uh, 3 billion uh, US, dollar, US dollar, which, uh, which is also yani, gives yani, a good example and the indication for the investment in renewable energy during the last four or five years uh, uh, in Asia. Uh, based on what has been achieved, uh, we can say that based on this, uh, for the uh, right hand side, we can see some achievements already uh, 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 gotten by, uh, based on the implementation of such renewable energy projects, the more advancement for the uh, ranking in uh, renewable energy, in the climate change, in uh, the investment, uh, some uh, different international uh, uh, recommendations regarding the uh, investment in Egypt in general and in, wind, uh, in renewable energy in specific. For the uh, left-hand side, uh, map, it, it represents the locations for the uh, renewable energy projects uh, already implemented in different areas. We can see Bemban, we can see hydro in, in Aswan, we can see also photovoltaic uh, all over the country and in many uh, uh, areas. This is regarding the renewable. Also, I do recommend all follow the uh, indicator uh, or the uh, pamphlet which is uh, uh, we uh, at Nerea issue it in quarterly uh, Nerea meter and you can get it from uh, Nerea website and you can find in this uh, pamphlet uh, uh, what we can see uh, a screenshot for the market based on what has been achieved in uh, capacities and also for the energy and some indicators regarding investment in, in, in renewable energy. Uh, let us go for the impact of uh, COVID-19 uh, on renewable energy, uh, not only frankly speaking on, in Egypt, but based on what has been published by the International Energy Agency, IAA, we can see comparing between the investment in 2020 and what has been invested 
in 2019 that all the uh, energy fields will 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 suffer from shortage of investment it ranges from 5% to 20% the only field which has positive uh, 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 percent is renewable energy yes it is less than or almost 1% but at least it represents the sustainability and the attractiveness for renewable energy i'm not speaking about the uh, egyptian market only but also for the global market based on this it is highly appreciated and highly recommended to uh, work in uh, renewable energy especially in egypt uh, uh, based in two main drivers the first one is the continuous devaluation of renewable energy prices and from the other side the uh, electricity reform uh, for uh, prices uh, reform also based on covid-19 all of us uh, yani witnessed uh, the negative prices for oil barrel in uh, uh, last april it means uh, yani that you can get one barrel of oil in addition to 33 us dollar which is was a uh, yani a catastrophe for the investors in, in 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 oil yes it was for only one month but it represents the high risk uh, uh, when uh, 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 for the investment and uh, either the oil and if we compare between also for the uh, situations of natural gas uh, based on him uh, 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 during the last period based on the uh, uh, covid-19 uh, uh, actions uh, based on that uh, the uh, effects of of or the impact of covid-19 already affecting frankly speaking the financing and yani the uh, risk for implementing projects either renewable energy projects or other projects uh, is uh, is increased also long term plans needs to be revisited or rechecked based on the slowdown of the demand on energy could it be uh, adjusted do we still need the same amount of uh, energy how could we foster and uh, 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 increase the growth rate for other uh, sectors such as uh, industrial uh, sector and also tourism sector commercial sectors all of these sectors which could be or could derive the demand on energy consequently there will be more demand on electricity and consequently on renewable energy also guarantees is one of the most challenging uh, issues uh especially for private sector to invest in any country either egypt or others and which could affect the market stability also the technologies which which technology could be appropriate now the uh, photovoltaic is 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 one of the most competitive in addition to wind but also we have to look for the waste to energy and in addition to that in the future could be for the electrical vehicles all of these issues must be considered especially it needs long term plans uh, for implementation and to uh, have the infrastructure the appropriate infrastructure to have uh, such projects um all so the uh, direct uh, impact for covid-19 is regarding the o and m the uh, slowdown for or the uh, delay for shipping uh, uh, the uh, projects already in operation we were lucky that we have in our stores yani some uh, reserve for uh, 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 the appropriate spare parts but for sure uh, we we hope that yani the the the, the after yani uh, the uh, the exercise already uh, done by the COVID-19 to have more stable uh, shipping uh, and also uh, the 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 the, the uh, either it, it it will be through the sea or uh, uh, through uh, flights. Also, the effect for uh, um, how could we uh, uh, 
uh, implement O&M activities in a safe uh, environment, how the measures for the uh, mitigating the COVID-19 back uh, uh, or something like this needs more and more measures in fact and also it was yani, a challenge how could we uh, uh, operate and maintain our projects in, in, uh, under uh, such risk and alhamdulillah yani, we faced uh, yani, different challenges but alhamdulillah we're still keeping uh, the operation of our projects with the uh, total capacity. Uh, for the future of renewable energy in Egypt, as all of you know, that the target for the uh, 2022 is to have 20%. Uh, if we compare between what has been installed in the, in the, in the market now and comparing it with the peak uh, capacity, we can say that it is almost 20%. If we are looking for the total capacity, for sure, it, it will be less. But for the 2035, we do believe that the, the uh, strategy is, is more dynamic. Uh, the first issue for the strategy was targeting 37% of renewable energy by the year 2035. Based on the updating of the strategy, it could be doubled, it could be more than this. But we do believe based on the drivers of the development of uh, the technology, the devaluation of uh, its prices, the, there will be different shares and the shares of each technology will differ uh, based on uh, uh, those parameters. Consequently, the main target is 40% is or more for renewable energy. The main uh, share for the such projects will be uh, from the uh, uh, photovoltaic and wind and also the investors uh, will be mainly from the uh, or the developers will be mainly from the uh, private sector. Um, in addition to that, there are different or potential areas for working during the coming period and based on what has been done by the COVID-19 is, is to enhance and to increase the market readiness. Uh, if we uh, could consider regulations is to include more and more independent power supply. Now a regulator is working on such a study. In addition to that, uh, in more integration for waste to energy projects and also uh, make the uh, grid able uh, uh, to absorb and to integrate the new technologies such as electrical vehicles. Also what has been already done for the grid performance and what has been already invested you and during the last three years more than 40 billion uh, billion uh, Egyptian pound already invested in the uh, grid uh, in, the, in the electricity grid yani we can say more double more than double uh, what has been installed in length uh, uh, comparing between the year 2015 and 2019. We are speaking about almost more than 1,200 uh, kilometer uh, for the network. Consequently, extension of the network in, in, in to, to, to many uh, and remote areas. Also, the quality for the uh, grid and also the regulations to uh, have uh, more uh, share for the private sector. Also, how could we be able and ready for having or to switch for the smart grid. This is one of the main issues which is, uh, could have yani, an interest during the coming period and uh, to, 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 to be uh, subject for further studies uh, uh, and update. Uh, also for the project's infrastructure, yani having more and more renewable energy is not only to install renewable energy projects, either wind, uh, solar or uh, whatever, but also to get the infrastructure for the, those projects ready, such as roads. You now we have all the area in Gulf of Suez, we are speaking about almost 1,200 square kilometer, almost a double of uh, Singapore uh, area is already ready to host all the projects, the roads for all of this area already uh, done for the land demarcation measurements, already done studies, all of these issues also, which is uh, increasing the quality for studies and measurements. As far as we have more measurements, the quality is increasing. This is one of the most topics also to be 
uh, highlighted uh, and uh, yeah, have uh, more focused during the uh, coming period. In addition to that, the quality uh, assurance for uh, BV systems and the, the recent uh, BV la testing lab already installed at Nerea, uh, uh, also which uh, yeah, especially will, will uh, support uh, the small and medium uh, projects, rooftop projects, and we do rely that such uh, testing lab has a, a major role to guarantee the quality of such uh, equipment for the Egyptian market. Uh, in addition to that, we couldn't uh, yani forget the energy efficiency yani because we usually see uh, coupling and merge uh, uh, between renewable energy and the energy efficiency. In, 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 in Nerea, we are working on energy efficiency on the demand side. In other words, we have different labs to test and to uh, make sure that the home appliances such as uh, dishwashers, washing machines, uh, ECs, uh, uh, refrigerators uh, are uh, according to the, the standards and consequently we could guarantee its quality for the Egyptian market. In addition to that, when we couple uh, uh, between renewable energy and energy efficiency, especially for a small and medium uh, projects in different sectors such as uh, uh, industrial and commercial uh, sectors, for sure it's one of the uh, most uh, appropriate solutions to uh, uh, um, uh, reduce the dependency or the uh, uh, consumption of electricity. Uh, based on that, I think we can yani, summarize or give some key messages that regarding the coming period that we have still more share for uh, projects development, either for wind and solar, uh, most share for uh, uh, private sector will be uh, uh, the major role during the coming period. Also uh, uh, on the national level, uh, the market readiness, how could we enhance the market uh, readiness either from the regulations, the electricity grid, the infrastructure, the quality of components. There will be you know, more and more uh, efforts already exerted from the uh, public uh, entities. But we have also to consider that not only for Egypt, but for different countries, there will be a challenge between how could we invest for the coming period. After COVID-19, all countries revisit uh, their plans for the investment in the health and digitization uh, sectors. How could most of the uh, tasks done online, such as the uh, webinar uh, today, and, uh, if we don't have COVID-19, it, it for sure it, it will be uh, done in a physical uh, uh, way. Consequently, how could we uh, 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 go for more digitization, not only for the private sector uh, uh, services or activities, but also for the public uh, uh, sector. Also safety regulations for both installation and o &M. Uh, under uh, the COVID-19, I think it needs, yani, and there will be uh, a need for more and more efforts uh, for health and safety. Uh, in addition to that, it was just a hint regarding the fluctuations of oil and gas, and how could we need a balance uh, between the uh, investment uh, uh, regarding the renewable energy and other uh, activities. These yani, uh, are the ideas or the key messages which I would like to share with you and thank you very much for your uh, attention. You are silent, Dr. Hab. I was muted my microphone during, yeah, yeah. thank you, Jineer uh, Ahmed. Actually, thank you very much, Dr. Hayat, for a very interesting speech. Actually, Dr. Hayat pointed out the status of renewable energy projects so far in Egypt. Uh, furthermore, he pointed out the impact of COVID-19 on different uh, energy supply sources, and uh, it's uh, likely that uh, renewable energy still keeping its momentum compared to other supply sources has 1% uh, increase in investment compared to other sources which went uh, negative. 
Uh, finally, Dr. Hayat drew a roadmap for us for what could be needed in order to achieve uh, our target. Uh, now we reached 81 participants uh, in our uh, webinar. Also, we received several questions. I will keep questions uh, after the second, our second speaker, uh, engineer uh, Muhammad Ahmed Abdurabbu. Uh, engineer Ahmed Abdurabbu uh, is Assistant Chief of Petroleum Central Department, Manager of Energy Efficiency Program within Minister of Petroleum. Uh, modernization project. All of us know that there is a modernization project taking place in Ministry of Petroleum and Renewable Energy Resources and one of the uh, dimensions of this program is energy efficiency. Uh, Engineer Ahmed Abdurabbo has got his uh, uh, master's degree in the field of environment, sure. economics, uh, management and policy. Uh, from the International Inst uh, Industrial Institute for Environmental Economics, Lund University in Sweden. Uh, I will not mention date. Uh, <laughs> uh, he also got his uh, bachelor's degree in mechanical power engineering from Einstein's University last century. <laughs> Engineer <laughs> Ahmed uh, has more than 30 years you, you, you told by yourself. I try, yeah, no, no, okay. you, you can keep it for yourself. <laughs> 30 years of professional experience, both in the field of energy and environment, in management, uh, uh, executive, uh, coordinating and consulting positions. Uh, Engineer Ahmed has participated within the Egyptian delegation for the UN climate change negotiation and contributed to the climate change capacity building program in Egypt. He also participated in many uh, energy efficiency, energy pricing and climate change related projects and studies program in cooperation with different international uh, institutions, just to name World Bank, USAID, EU, Global uh, GEF, uh, UNDP, ERD, uh, EBRD, JICA. Uh, also he participated uh, in the sustainable development uh, of local and international activities and events ended by attending Rio 20 plus summit in Rio. Uh, Engineer Ahmed will speak to us about the uh, uh, energy efficiency and renewable energy in the oil and gas sector. Please, Engineer Ahmed, the floor is yours. First of all, uh, I would like to Thank you, the EU and the UN and Dynamics for uh, implementing and designing this uh, wonderful and important project. I would like also to thank uh, the organizer for uh, uh, all the activities and effort done to organize this uh, webinar. Uh, as a start, I would like to uh, introduce the background of the energy efficiency in the, uh, in the petroleum sector. Uh, with the uh, Egyptian revolution in 2011-2012 and the shortage in uh, electricity and the gas supply, we have a, a prime minister degree to reduce the electricity consumption in uh, all the governmental buildings by 20%. And this was the start uh, point for energy efficiency in the petroleum sector. After we achieved this target almost from uh, uh, reducing uh, energy or electricity consumption in uh, our uh, building, we realized that we didn't have energy efficiency in our own companies, in our own activities. So uh, in February 2015, we established the uh, Supreme Energy Efficiency Committee for the petroleum sector, and uh, with this, with the working uh, activities of this committee, we realized we are lacking a lot of element of energy efficiency. And uh, when we started the modernization project, uh, we uh, try to uh, overcome all these 
and uh, build all this element. So uh, I will go back to my presentation. My presentation today will cover three main issues. The first one is the energy efficiency activities in the oil and gas sector. And then the second uh, element will uh, be the renewable energy in oil and gas sector, although this is not more our core business, but we realize that we have to have uh, renewable uh, energy component in our activities. Uh, the third one is the International Sustainable Energy Initiative and how we are preparing the petroleum sector to cope with this sustainable initiative, sustainable energy initiative. As I said, we, we realized that from the activities of the Supreme Energy Efficiency Committee uh, established in 2015 that we lack a lot of uh, elements of the energy efficiency. So when we start our modernization project, we set up seven objectives of this uh, energy efficiency uh, program. Uh, four of them we considered as a short term, and short term means we have to start with these activities, and the long term, we say, say uh, we mean by long term, we should wait two or three years to start this long term uh, objective. So we, 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 I will go uh, quickly with the seven objectives, and then I will detail the achievement of all these objectives uh, after uh, this. Uh, the first objective is to set up an institutional uh, energy efficiency department or committees or even uh, uh, working groups in all the petroleum sector uh, companies, uh, holding companies or EGBC or all the affiliated company. The second uh, objective is to develop and uh, uh, capacity building for energy efficiency. The third one is to build database because we, if we don't know your consumption, you cannot manage your consumption and improve your uh, consumption. And the first short-term objective is to implement low-cost low cost, uh, energy efficiency uh, activities. And uh, in the long term, we have uh, also set uh, a three objective. One of them is to introduce uh, energy uh, uh, efficiency uh, uh, oriented technologies uh, for unit operation. And uh, the second one is to uh, develop a system performance optimization for all the com our companies and then the third one is to develop legal and administrative framework for energy efficiency for the petroleum sector. So I will uh, present the achievement of each uh, 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 objective. The first uh, one is to set an institutional setup. So in uh, August 2018, we established the energy efficiency and the climate deviation at the Ministry of Petroleum by a ministerial degree with uh, 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 powerful authorities and uh, uh, capabilities. So we can develop uh, all what we would like. We can cooperate with uh, all the institutions. We can ask for any information from our uh, uh, sister government companies. And also we established uh, energy efficiency department in all our uh, uh, holding company, EGBC, the Egyptian General Petroleum Corporation, uh, EGAS, uh, Ganubi uh, uh, holding company, and also for the petroleum, uh, petrochemical holding company. And we are now in the process to finalize uh, energy efficiency department in all the affiliated company. Uh, we succeeded uh, to develop energy efficiency uh, department all in all the energy intensive companies and we're working with the other uh, affiliated company. The second objective is to develop capacity for uh, 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 energy efficiency in our uh, petroleum sector. So we developed what we call is a long term training plan. We selected 15 uh, training program and this 15 training program is uh, uh, replicated according to the demand. We replicated each of this program maybe five or six or seven times according the, to the demand. And we bought some sort of action plan where these courses will be delivered and when and who will develop uh, this uh, or conduct this uh, training program. We have five companies from the petroleum sector companies that uh, 
were capable to develop a training material and secure a good trainer for this program. So uh, this program was uh, uh, conducted by these uh, uh, companies. Uh, we started this uh, long-term training plan mid of 2019, and we uh, are finalizing this. We're supposed to finalize this program, a training program by uh, May or April 2020, but for COVID and the 19 and their impact on the uh, training activities and the, uh, uh, all this uh, regulation to gather, gathering people, we delay some of the program, but we expect to complete this training pro program by October, early November 2020. Uh, we conducted about 72 training programs. We uh, 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 succeeded to uh, train about uh, more than 1,000 uh, trainee in our affiliated company and uh, also in our uh, EGBC and holding company. Uh, for the development database, uh, before uh, our program, we know of the uh, overall consumption of the sector, uh, whether it's uh, oil or natural gas or uh, uh, other petroleum, but uh, uh, when we develop our database, we succeeded to know different uh, uh, composition of the consumption and who are consuming by sector and also by companies. So we know now that, that the oil production company is a major consumer. They consume about 41% of our consumption. Uh, and the gas processing is uh, the lowest one is consuming about 17% and then refineries the second and the petrochemical is the third. Uh, we also uh, know the consumption by type, by natural gas is a major consumer, uh, consuming a, a source of energy in our sector, and then coming the off gases that released from the different proceeds, and then diesel fuel, and then we have uh, ABG associated with rural gas and electricity, and in the end we have the mazot, which is now not uh, commonly used in our uh, sector. Uh, we, we, as I said, we would like to send a message to all the top management of the petroleum sector that energy efficiency is cost effective. So, so we implemented low cost, no cost uh, savings and uh, we were very much keen to uh, document all this uh, savings by uh, uh, documenting the uh, baseline and then the uh, uh, consumption uh, production after implementing the uh, low cost, no cost measure, and we succeed to save about 428 uh, million Egyptian pounds. And uh, this was in uh, natural gas, electricity, uh, mixed fuel, and the steams. And uh, this was mainly in the uh, energy intensive companies, refineries, petrochemical, and some of. Uh, Upstream companies. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, we have to introduce some uh, oil, uh, some oriented energy efficiency uh, technologies. So we start with UNIDO for, for by uh, motor uh, system optimization and also uh, fire, uh, fire equipment optimization. We have a lot of boiler, we have a lot of uh, heater, uh, heating the crude oil field for distillation. So we started with such repeated technologies and we have succeeded to have a lot of uh, uh, projects implemented with UNIDO and also a lot of uh, uh, equipment have been installed in different refineries uh, by our own uh, uh, investment. And uh, we started with cooperation with the uh, European Bank for Restructure and uh, Development to implement large investment uh, projects so we conducted uh, several studies uh, for uh, sales oil processing company, for gas for the main transmission companies for natural gas and for Alexandria Petroleum companies. Uh, the first company, sales oil processing company, now have a, a, after uh, conducting the, uh, two, the, two studies with the support of uh, EBRD, uh, we have a loan uh, of uh, 250, uh, US dollar to revamp most of the energy intensive equipment at the Saudi Arabia Processing Company 
and also with the with the GASCO, we have another 200 million uh, uh, loan to develop energy efficiency in the Shun compression station and in other activities uh, in GASCO. And uh, we are in the final stage for uh, uh, concluding the study for Alexandria Petroleum Company. We uh, we have a, a, a preliminary agreement to have also 250 uh, US dollar for uh, revamping some units and to introduce uh, some new units in Alexandria Petroleum Company. Uh, as I said, we have uh, to develop legal framework and the standard operation procedure for, for uh, the petroleum sector. And uh, we, we succeeded to have uh, two major uh, projects with EU and the uh, Japanese International Co uh, uh, Cooperation Agency, JICA. Uh, the main component in, uh, of this uh, two project is to develop energy efficiency strategy for the petroleum sector and to operationalize of the energy efficiency department at the Ministry of Petroleum to develop short-term and long-term working plan. Also to develop uh, uh, manual energy efficiency manual and standard operating procedure for different uh, intensive energy consuming equipment and unit. Uh, we also uh, continue uh, in a capacity building with, uh, with this, uh, two, uh, this two project and we also uh, uh, would like to have uh, energy efficiency technical uh, audit. We started to develop uh, tailored energy efficiency technical audit methodology to be used for the uh, 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 Mr. Petroleum and we will conduct four uh, energy audit in our companies, two in the uh, refineries and one in the petrochemical facility and one in the other screen and we started uh, uh, commissioning the first refinery right now. This concludes the energy efficiency activities in the petroleum uh, sector. Uh, I will uh, go very quickly for the renewable energy because we have a lot of uh, uh, insights from Dr. Fayad. Actually, uh, we try to have some cooperation with the NRA and uh, <clears throat> I will uh, discuss this very soon. Uh, during the uh, uh, electricity shortage, uh, we started to develop our renewable uh, energy uh, equipment, uh, our technologies and the project. Uh, we asked all our uh, companies to have uh, a dedicated DB system for the rooftop uh, in the administrative building. Uh, now we have 21 companies installed about 1.3 uh, megawatt. I know that very small compared by the uh, achievement of the renewable sector, but this is uh, not our uh, comparison right now. Uh, another uh, uh, 78 companies in the process of installing about 6.3 uh, megawatt. Uh, mega, megawatt, yes. Uh, also, we have uh, 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 some dedicated uh, uh, PV in our uh, uh, offshore uh, uh, oil and gas production uh, uh, wells. Uh, this is not common, but uh, uh, we, we use this where we have unmanned uh, cell uh, operating uh, well. We, we have uh, two cases, one in uh, Petrobel Company and one in Gapo. Uh, in 2018, we have a memo of understanding with the NRA uh, between the Anub, the, the holding company for uh, uh, oil in our petroleum uh, sector, to develop uh, uh, some promising sites to develop geothermal uh, project. We studied potential, but this program was not activated till now, and uh, we're supposed to uh, activate it uh, very soon. That's, this uh, photo is uh, 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 a photo of uh, signing the uh, memorandum of understanding for the strategic cooperation with the EU signed in April uh, 2018. And uh, uh, recently, with the Erasmus project, we uh, signed the memorandum of understanding also with the NARIA and the uh, uh, five national universities and the three uh, 
international universities. Uh, I guess this project should be have a, a, a lot of attention, attention from our uh, uh, both uh, sides, from Nerea and also from Danube, because this will establish center and the new graduate engineering diploma for geothermal, and we have a, a high potential for geothermal, and we can uh, make use of the depleted oil well to reduce the cost of the project. We also have a capacity uh, component and the uh, technical capacity building and the capacity building uh, for the economic and the uh, evaluation and the return of the geothermal uh, activities. And we would like to also uh, to, to establish some cooperation uh, with the EU in the geothermal energy field. Uh, I came to the third component of my uh, presentation, which is the International Sustainable uh, Energy Initi Initiative. Actually, I limit myself to the two initiatives that uh, were uh, developed by our counterpart in energy efficiency in the Ministry of Petroleum. So I have from the Japan, uh, Miki, uh, the Minister of Economy and the Trans Trade and Industry uh, of Japan. Uh, in 2017, Japan uh, developed the high, uh, Japan hydrogen strategy as a main strategy to try to uh, deal with the climate change and to reduce their uh, emission. And they have a target to reduce 26% of their GHG emission uh, by 2030. And 80% uh, by 2050, and this uh, uh, percentage is from the 1990 uh, emission level. And they pointed four key points of uh, activity for this strategy. The first one is the supply side, and they have to increase the uh, uh, realized low cost uh, hydrogen uh, production and use, and uh, to develop utilization technologies and uh, they very much uh, uh, have uh, uh, concentrating in fuel cell uh, technology and fuel cell car and how to uh, develop the international uh, standard in this uh, area. And we are in Egypt try to promote, promote electric cars. So we have to uh, have uh, a compromise should our decision, should we follow the fuel cell vehicle or electric car directly, so we, we, we have to investigate this. Also, the use of hydrogen in power generation in mobility and the uh, potential use of hydrogen in the cellular process and the heat uh, utilization. And the last point uh, in this strategy is to build awareness. For the EU, uh, as Dr. Ahmed al Bittagi mentioned, the, and Dr. Hafiz uh, mentioned the uh, European Green Deal, the European, uh, the European uh, Union uh, developed two strategies for uh, under the umbrella of uh, the European Green Deal. The first strategy is the EU Energy System Integration Strategy and the Hydrogen Strategy. The Green Deal itself has a, a, a four uh, objective. The first one is become EU to become a climate neutral by 2050 and to protect the human life, uh, animal, plant, and uh, by cutting all pollutions uh, to help companies become a world leader in the new, uh, in clean production product and also to help uh, uh, just and inclusive transition to more clean energy. Uh, also under preparation right now, uh, the carbon border tax and uh, this carbon border tax has a lot of debate about uh, uh, their uh, impact on the global trade. Uh, they also have some uh, uh, complexity in the implementation and the, the, how to put the value of this uh, carbon tax. But uh, the process, uh, I'm sure, will end by as uh, they plan by June 21. Uh, I would like to say in conclusion that all the outlook in, in the world indicates the reduction of all the fossil fuel consumption, even natural gas. We can see natural gas, the, the, the green line is increasing from 19 
until uh, we reach 2035. But the rapid out scenario of the BBB uh, forecasts that the demand of or consumption of uh, natural gas will be reduced also. And we can see the oil production uh, or oil demand or primary uh, energy consumption of uh, petroleum oil is going down. And the, uh, the, this rapid scenario of PB uh, project or forecast uh, rapid consum uh, reduction also. We can see the renewable is booming and the, this is very clear uh, uh, indication for all oil and gas companies to try to cope with this transition. Uh, right now in the petroleum sector, we are investigating how to deal with the, this green transition. And we are in the process of uh, uh, developing a green transition roadmap for the petroleum sector. With this, I conclude my presentation and thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Ahmed. Uh, thank you for the excellent presentation. Uh, actually, Engineer Ahmed pointed out about the effort of Minister of Petroleum and Mineral Resources regarding developing a database for uh, their consuming company. Actually, he shows that about 5.5 million ton of uh, ton oil equivalent being consumed with the sector, which represents by 2018 around 8.5% which make it of the total energy uh, demand in Egypt, which is one of the major sector, and this is why focus is very much important. Also, he pointed an excellent approach, which is followed through focusing first on low-cost, no-cost applications, which is uh, 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 saved uh, over 400 million Egyptian pounds, which shows that it's not necessary to go for very expensive projects at the beginning, start with low cost, low cost. And this is also has an impact of over 300,000 uh, tons of CO2. Also, he shows the cooperation with several international uh, partners, specifically in very interesting area like hydrogen. I, in this aspect, I also would like to point out about the a European hydrogen strategy, which has been issued back in last July. Also, we in this project are developing uh, in the energy strategy, what we call it the hydrogen scenario. And this will be part of the 2040 energy strategy. Uh, also, he uh, pointed by the end uh, impact of uh, reduction in demand uh, which is basically leading to our question. I excuse you if we can extend our meeting for additional 15 minutes to give a chance to respond to the question. We received a lot of questions. We have, uh, we reached 82 participants uh, and uh, we would like to respond as maximum as possible to the question we received. Uh, I appreciate if the presenter is uh, be, uh, yani answer uh, in a short yeah. word uh, for so the question to give a chance to ask as much as, as much as possible question we have. Engineer uh, Ahmed, you would like to say something? Okay. Actually, we received questions from abroad. It shows that we are not just being uh, uh, shown uh, nationally, but also internationally. Uh, most of the questions I took with, uh, for both Dr. Kayat and uh, Engineer Ahmed regarding worries uh, about uh, the reduction in demand as a result of impact of COVID-19 long term. Actually, uh, Dr. Kayat shows the short term impact of COVID-19, but many uh, of our participants are worried about the long-term impact of COVID-19 uh, on demand, specifically on prices of energy, as well as uh, on demand for energy. And is that might lead to uh, reverse the plan from going for more renewable because fuels become cheaper or because we have an excess of supply which reduce interest 
in energy efficiency. I appreciate uh, Dr. Hayat, provide your thoughts, and uh, Engineer Ahmed uh, uh, provide also your thoughts, but please be focused to give a chance for more questions. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Hayat. I couldn't hear you well uh, due to the internet connection. I'm sorry for this. Uh, the question is basically about the long-term impact of COVID-19. <clears throat> it shows the short-term impact uh, in light of reduction in demand as well as reduction in price of conventional fuels. Is that going to have an impact in investment? Engineer Ahmed shows us that renewable might grow, but this was an estimate made 2019, not before COVID-19. So uh, do we expect that uh, it's going to have an impact as well as surplus in supply would create less interest in energy efficiency? Please. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Yanni. Um, let us say if we coupled what has been presented by uh, Mr. Ahmed regarding the expectation in 2019 and what has been issued already by the uh, International Energy Agency regarding the uh, slowdown of demand on energy sectors uh, or en on energy resources, uh, only a positive uh, indicator was for renewable energy. Uh, this could give us an uh, indication regarding that uh, uh, renewable energy will keep at least for a short period uh, in a positive, uh, in the positive direction. But for sure, if uh, the second wave for the COVID-19 uh, lasting for a long period, for sure the uh, uh, consumption sectors, uh, mainly in all countries regarding the industrial, uh, touristic, uh, commercial, and even agriculture sector will reduce its uh, demand on energy. Consequently, it will slow down the generation plans. But our hope is during the coming period, and uh, according to what we already listen, either from uh, USA that there will be a certain uh, vaccine and there will be a Russian one, and there will be, uh, could be a, a British one. Uh, all of these news uh, could give us yani, uh, a hope that during a short period, uh, the globe could adapt itself with uh, uh, COVID-19 and has uh, an updated plan. How could we overcome and how, or at least how could we um, adapt ourselves uh, uh, with COVID-19 and didn't reduce uh, the uh, development plans? Because according to what has been done all over the world, all uh, 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 sectors already slowed down. Consequently, all all GDP all over the world has been reduced. Now we are, if, if GDP for the worldwide uh, 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 achieved the 2%, it will, we will be lucky. Consequently, it will be uh, a very tough uh, game if, if it lasting. Uh, our hope that renewable energy based on its uh, uh, features, it could be uh, applied in a small and medium and large scale, it could be, or it could has more uh, flexibility to uh, the needs for uh, uh, countries, especially in Egypt for the off-grid uh, systems. If we look for the agriculture sector, we can see high potential. All of these uh, applications will be off-grid. Consequently, it will not be affected with COVID-19 rather than the need for the agriculture, uh, agriculture sector. Of also, if we consider the reform of fuel prices during, uh, which is already announced by the government and also the, uh, the plans for the future, it could be uh, one of the most promising to have more and more share of renewable energy regarding the uh, 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 agriculture sector or uh, uh, of, uh, of grid application. Also, the uh, potential for waste to energy. Yes, it could be now a small application. There is a feed-in tariff uh, project. Uh, th there is a feed-in tariff system. It might take uh, yani, a short period for adjusting and how to get the experience with uh, such a projects, but for sure it will yani, uh, have a certain share during the uh, coming period. Uh, what I would like to summarize is based on the flexibility of renewable energy, it's uh, advantage to be implemented in terms of one kilowatt up to one 
gigawatt even, we will have more and more adaptation from renewable energy and to keep in momentum, even it could be uh, less, but it will keep in positive. Thank you very much. Engineer Ahmed, could you provide your thoughts? But the reason, uh, uh, I would sure. like to say uh, that Dr. Khayat have uh, covered most of the impact of uh, COVID-19. Actually, I would like to, uh, first of all, uh, respond to the graph that Dr. Khayat showed us about the deep uh, reduction of the petroleum uh, uh, product price by minus 33 during the few days of the start of the COVID-19. I would like to uh, just clarify this topic because uh, the prices is a matter of balance between supply, supply or production of this oil product and then the, the, the demand of the, the, uh, uh, all the economic sector for oil product and then the storage capacity. With the full of uh, uh, demand, and continuing, continuing the production, the, the, the supply was very much uh, higher than the uh, demand, and that's why and all the companies and all the, the countries all over the world have uh, failed their storage capacity. So the production companies cannot rapidly reduce their production. They have a, a, a portfolio of production, and it, they couldn't reduce their production with the same reduction in the uh, consumption. That's why the, this deep uh, uh, price uh, during the uh, first one month of COVID-19. But I can tell that COVID-19 will have a minor, in the long term, a minor impact on the demand, but the major uh, uh, impact of reducing the demand for oil and gas activities will be from the environmental uh, uh, strategies that is emerging to reduce the GHG emission all over the world, like the strategy of Japan to uh, uh, introduce hydrogen, like the Green Deal in the EU, uh, the, the state of the United States have another uh, initiative also a lot of countries all over the world has a, 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 a somehow mandate under the Paris Agreement to reduce their emission reduction under the Paris Agreement. Each country has to uh, report uh, national determined contribution to reduce the, the, the emission. And this is the long term impact on the oil and gas activity because this the, 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 the consumption is very much related by technology and they to uh, uh, phase out the specific technologies and investment in these technologies, it will take time. But for sure, in the long term, as I, uh, I have indicated in the scenario of the BB, a rapid scenario of the BB, uh, the, the consumption of oil and gas will be reduced and all uh, petroleum sector all over the world, oil and gas, uh, petroleum sector in the world should consider this impact and should work uh, different scenarios to cope with this. And uh, as I said, COVID will have impact, but will not last forever. But the real impact will come from this uh, uh, new uh, initiative for uh, green economy and for coping with uh, climate change uh, commitments. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Ahmed. Uh, uh, actually, as you said, that uh, environmental impact uh, uh, or environmental driver could be the main driver. Uh, Dr. Hayat, I will uh, forward to you three questions. Please, Yanni, uh, provide your answer in telegraphic form. Uh, first, a question about the status of the auction scheme for renewable energy. Uh, we have a second question uh, about uh, the cancelling of West Nile projects. Uh, 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 which might pose a challenge to the target, and a third question about the competitiveness of the Egyptian local market uh, compared to other regional markets for renewable energy, uh, considering incentives is being offered 
which is not being same being offered in the Egyptian market. Please, in telegram. And, and, and telegraphic for the first and second, it could be appropriate if uh, our colleagues from uh, EETC uh, yani give uh, some uh, clarifications or explanation. Uh, regarding the competitiveness, I, I do believe that each market has its uh, specific features. It needs uh, tailored uh, policies. For sure, we can compare, but if we look for the North African countries, we can have different experiences even between the uh, Moroccan market and the Egyptian market, and all of them fit for the national needs. This is in a telegraphic one. Okay. Uh, I have a question uh, to Engineer Ahmed regarding uh, the hydrogen. Uh, you already have a cooperation with Japan regarding a hydrogen. Uh, what could be the preliminary perspectives of Ministry of Petroleum regarding hydrogen. For example, in the European strategy, uh, they differentiate between green hydrogen generated from renewable and blue hydrogen generated uh, from oil and gas and other products. And uh, they requested to have a carbon capture and storage for this facility on an interim uh, phase till switch totally to green hydrogen. What's the perspectives of uh, Minister of Petroleum regarding hydrogen so far? Actually, we are uh, investigating this issue right now because, as you know, uh, we have a, a, a considerable uh, reserves of natural gas and we have also liquefaction uh, uh, facilities that uh, liquefy natural gas for uh, export. And uh, it is uh, to, to, to develop hydrogen uh, production facility from natural gas, uh, it will take uh, time and also investment. And we have to uh, uh, revamp or uh, adjust our technologies uh, and uh, all the infrastructure to deal with the hydrogen if we would like to uh, use uh, hydrogen locally or. Uh, also our uh, export uh, uh, facilities, if we uh, think about uh, uh, exporting uh, hydrogen to the EU or any uh, other countries. So it will take time uh, and, uh, to, to, to take the decision. Actually, that all the countries is working now to develop uh, more economic and uh, safe technologies for uh, storage and production. And uh, as you said, uh, the EU have a target to ban all uh, 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 fossil uh, fuel based hydrogen by 2030. So the gap or the, uh, the, the allocated time for uh, exporting this hydrogen to the EU, the hydrogen produced from fossil fuel or for, for natural gas is 10 years from now. If we deduct three or four years to uh, uh, develop the technologies and the capacities, so I'm not sure if this gap of five or six years is uh, quite enough to uh, recover the investment and cost, but we, we investigate uh, uh, hydrogen active uh, issues uh, for, for local production and for uh, exporting right now. Uh, we didn't have uh, a conclusion, but we consider this issue because if we have a major counterpart, the EU will not import uh, uh, natural gas based from, uh, produced from fossil fuel or natural gas by 2030. So we have to reconsider the, uh, this issue very, very, uh, Thank this you. Is yes, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Hayat, there is a several question about waste to energy. One of these questions is questioning is waste to energy is 100% renewable source or it's not that uh, renewable. And another uh, question is basically uh, about uh, uh, why biomass energy is neglected in the coming project, although Egypt has high quantities of agricultural waste, urban waste, uh, and uh, what's the mass 
uh, investor, what incentives being offered for investors uh, for in waste to energy. Thank you very much for uh, the 100% of renewable energy. We do believe, even we are working on renewable energy, that we have to work in an integrating uh, plans. It doesn't mean that we have only one source uh, for generating electricity and the other sources of energy, but we have to integrate with others. As much as we succeed to uh, have soft integration for renewable energy, we will have more and more penetration levels and to secure, to be secure. Um, also regarding the biomass, we have already now the low 41 for the year 2019. It, 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 it uh, uh, managed the feed-in tariff for the waste to energy. Uh, the maximum capacity of the projects is to be 20 megawatt. This means that such projects will be implemented uh, in the level of distribution companies. And uh, there are uh, different rules for the governorate, for the investor, and also for the distribution company. And I think it is yani, already defined in the law, uh, which manage the uh, process of the feed and tariff for the biomass. This is what I think regarding the second and third. Are there any other uh, questions? Uh, no, it's uh, just uh, saying if it is 100% renewable or not, and what the potential is also. Uh, the potential in Egypt, as you know, is too high for even solar and wind. But as I mentioned, Yani, working in planning for, for energy means that we need to integrate several sources to generate electricity. It doesn't mean to have only one source for 100% uh, and others, no. Even uh, uh, there is a, a, an integration process for to integrate more and more renewable energy projects based on the infrastructure of the grid, the needs, the appropriate technology. And I think what has been done through the strategy for uh, energy in Egypt, which started, uh, started already with 37%. And uh, uh, after uh, a revision, it has been increased uh, uh, even for more than 40%, and there is a potential for to be more than 60, but for sure it needs uh, yani different technical and uh, infrastructure issues to be considered to reach uh, such a target. Uh, exactly as you pointed, because one of our questions was basically about what could be needed in operation of the transmission system to take care of this high share of renewable energy, it's increased demand on ancillary services, so substantial change. Uh, I forward question, maybe uh, the last question to Engineer Ahmed about transportation sector. Uh, the question is about mentioning that 30% of uh, final consumption is goes from transportation. We heard that there is a plan to switch to natural gas for transportation. There is a plan to switch to electric mobility for transportation. We heard that there is a plan to switch to hydrogen for transportation. What's the plan? Okay. Actually, uh, as uh, the question uh, indicates that uh, uh, transport is a major consumer of uh, gasoline and uh, diesel fuel. And the, those are main uh, product of the petroleum sector. So we are very much keen to deal with uh, transport sector. Right now, right now, even in the energy efficiency strategy of the petroleum sector, uh, I asked our consultant from Human Dynamics to include some overarching objective or target that the petroleum sector and all the other sectors that consume uh, our petroleum sector product should have a clear energy efficiency uh, strategies and target objectives and uh, even program and uh, project. As you said, we, we have different initiatives right now in Egypt to increase the uh, uh, natural gas consumption in transport sector, uh, to increase natural gas, we increase the fueling station, and we increase the uh, fuel switching uh, uh, facilities to switch uh, gasoline and diesel cars to uh, 
to breast mature guys this one activity but we would like also and also we have the initiative of uh, electric car but i would like to to have as all the uh, uh, other country all over the world have a minimum energy efficiency standard for the current vehicle we have to have a limit for uh, minimum energy efficiency of different uh, vehicle especially the large transportation vehicle and also for uh, public sector uh, public uh, uh, car also uh, this is our intention in our energy efficiency strategy but we cannot work in this activity alone we have to have other counterparts so in our strategy we will pinpoint that we have to do with this point and when we conclude our strategy we will try to cooperate as an outcome of our strategy with different places to develop uh, this energy efficiency strategy for different sectors and this is my perspective right now okay a, a very quick question engineer ahmed uh, it's about turbo expanders opportunity in the gas sector is it acceptable by technically by gasco uh, let me uh, answer this uh, uh, quickly, please, because this, this is very, it's very competitive and very, uh, very much cost effective. Uh, we uh, studied these uh, opportunities and uh, with the fluctuation of natural gas pressure in the uh, uh, transmission line during our uh, revolution, so we, we have some doubt about the stability of the pressure and also with the introduction of a, a, a lot of uh, uh, new petrochemical facility, the pressure in the uh, transmission line is fluctuating, but uh, I guess after finalizing our project with uh, GASCO, with, which is uh, funded by the EBRD, uh, EBRD, we will have some sort of stabilized pressure, and uh, in this time we, uh, we, we can Reinvestigate the turbo expander, especially in the uh, uh, transmission uh, side. Thank you very much. Uh, I would appreciate very much. I think uh, kept 78 participants to the end of uh, uh, our webinar, which is great. Uh, I believe it's great success. And thank you for the presenters because this is primarily attributed to their knowledge, contributions, and uh, insights they provided. I would like to thank all participants and attendees for providing uh, questions. See, we couldn't answer all the questions. Sure, uh, this webinar has been recorded and it will be available on uh, YouTube. Uh, a link will be sent to all of you uh, regarding uh, the webinar as well as the presentation will make uh, available. Thank you all and looking forward to see you in our next webinar. Thank you again and goodbye and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.